Hello everyone, hello. Well, here we are again. And here we are for the last time for 2020. Uh, I think I could speak for everyone pretty much around the world. This year has been a major pain in the ass. It has been rough on everybody. We all can't wait to get to New Year's Eve and say goodbye to 2020. And fingers crossed 2021 is a lot better year than this one. <laughs> uh, but anyway, uh, I can't believe it's been another year in the OVC. And um, this was a challenging year because <laughs> a good portion of the spring and early summer all the record stores were closed here. Some of them are still closed, <laughs> but a couple are open with restrictions still. And as of lately, now that we're in the f cold and flu season, the restrictions got even tighter, but they're still open. And some of them are still surviving, though some of them, are, the bigger ones have closed, which is surprisingly. Um, but yeah, uh, this year I, went digging in the springtime and got caught up in a protest riot <laughs> after digging uh, twice. <laughs> it happened a second time. Second one wasn't as bad as the first one. The first one was terrible, absolutely terrible. The second one, by comparison to the first, it was a lot m mellower <laughs> as far as angry people protesting. And that happened to me twice last year, God. And, um, Hopefully, I'm done walking in the middle of freaking protest riots <laughs> after digging for records. Anyway, that's just the year it's been, and that's just and that's just one reason why this year has been a big pain in my ass. <laughs> and like I said, we all can't wait for it to finish. Anyway, um, I'm going to show the last record haul for the year, my December vinyl. And um, that'll be that for this year. Uh, but first, we're going to start with some uh, VCLT. Uh, oh, grabbing one too many records. Yeah, some VCLT. This is from Sean Whelan. Uh, his channel on YouTube is SW Studio Productions. Great guy. Shows his vinyl collection. He's also into the theater where he lives. Has a radio show. He's a man of the arts, damn it. And uh, he was kind enough to send me this 12 inch single from Genesis, uh, UK pressing, uh, Land of Confusion. He even sent it along with a nice note, which I won't read on here. Uh, not that he gets personal or anything on it, but um, real nice note. And uh, I got this in the mail right on Christmas Eve. <laughs> I got this on Christmas Eve from Sean uh, through the mail, and uh, he lives in the UK. I live here in the US. How he managed to do that, I don't know, but that was good work on his part, because I got this right on Christmas Eve in the mail. That, that was incredible. And uh, I have always been after this 12-inch single for a long time. I have the seven inch version of this, but always wanted the 12 inch version. And around my area, this is just not an easy thing to track down unless you buy it online, which I don't like to do. I like to find it in the wild. Even though I didn't find it in the wild, it was gifted to me. I really, really appreciate it. And uh, I've spun it already. Of course, I know what the song sounds like, but it's just. Oh, it's so cool to have this in the collection, me being a big Genesis fan. And I'm a fan of all eras of Genesis. I love the Peter Gabriel stuff in the 70s. I love the pop slash uh, prog. <laughs> well, I, mean, I don't know if you can really call it prog in the 80s, but for shits and giggles, that's what I'll call it for now. But mo mostly pop. The, as they say, the Phil Collins era <laughs> of Genesis in the 80s. I'm a big fan of that. Because that's actually when I discovered the band and then rediscovered their back catalog of 70s albums and songs and thought, wow, they sound different, but it sounds great. And I was a fan of both. I even love their 90s music, which there was only two albums. But um, I loved all that. Even when Phil Collins left the band and Ray Wilson took over, 
though it wasn't their best record, <laughs> and a lot of Genesis fans will, will agree on that one, there were still things on that record I liked. It was called Calling All Stations. Anyway, I'm a huge fan of all eras of Genesis, and it really annoys the shit out of me when people say the only good Genesis was 70s Genesis and the rest was shit after that. That really annoys the living crap out of me, but everybody's entitled to their opinion. Unfortunately, I just have to hear everyone's opinion <laughs> on this channel. Anyway, there we go. Uh, thank you so much, Sean, for this gift. And you got it right in on Christmas Eve. That was amazing. I really appreciate it. This is so nice. He said it was payback for a record I sent him, which was the uh, Power Station LP. Some he couldn't find in his area, but they grow on trees over here. <laughs> so I sent him a copy of the Power Station album and and you know as a little payback he sent me this and I'm um, very happy to receive this because I had been after that for so long nice to have that in the purse in the collection so once again thanks Sean trust me if I've already spun it twice in its entirety because it has the special 12 inch remix of Land of Confusion on the B side as the album version <coughs> and the awesome song Feeding the Fire which was a song that was written during the Invisible Touch sessions, but never made the record. So now it's just a, it's just one of those uh, B-side on a 12-inch single. <laughs> but still, great stuff, great stuff, and um, absolutely love that. All right, let's get into some the last vinyl haul of the year, and pretty much all the records I scored during the month of December. We're going to start with Dream Theater, metal prog band, <laughs> Dream Theater, this is a live record and I'm so glad to get this, uh, Distant Memories, Live in London, I almost forgot the name of the damn album, a cool four record set, three CDs are also included in this, and um, my god, this is a great, great album, a great live album. Um, not only did it do the new uh, Dream Theater songs from the time, plus a few classic old ones, it also celebrates the uh, 20th anniversary of Seeing This From A Memory, where they play the whole album in its entirety, which takes up about three sides of, <laughs> or almost three albums, what am I saying, of this record set. Here is records one and two, and this cool jacket. I love the artwork. Nice artwork. They really put some care into the artwork. There's the gatefold for records one and two. It is a great sounding live record. I love the low end on this. It booms in here, uh, but it's a good mix of the lows and highs because there's a lot of keyboards and vocals and just amazing guitar work. And um, yeah, it, it's it's the mix is really good. Considering it's a live record, it is a good mix. And I really love uh, these labels. If you look at the clock, you can see what side we're on. <laughs> so, ah, a nice little trick there. So, when I wanted what side it is, I just look and see what time it is, and that'll tell me what side we're on. So, I like that touch. Fun. It's fun. And this is a great album. All the new songs on this album, plus the classic Dream Theater songs, are great. And then, of course, you get the whole Scenes from a Memory album played live. It is a great set. And here is records three and four. And uh, again, beautiful artwork. Look at that. Nice. And there's the photo of the gatefold. I think this one has the uh, small uh, book of live photography. Uh, so really nice addition there. Let's see if I can find a whole, well, these are good pictures. And uh, yeah, so some cool, some cool stuff packaged along with this. I'm digging this collection set. The music sounds great, and it's great to hear the 20th anniversary live recording of Scenes from Memory 
20 years ago, I went to San Francisco and saw Scenes from a Memory Tour when it was a brand new record. And that was one of the best shows I've ever been to. Uh, I left the theater in San Francisco so inspired. <laughs> On cloud nine, I just floated all the way home <laughs> from the Bay Area. Uh, it was a great show. I can't believe that was 20 years ago. And then I go back to San Francisco 20 years later and see the 20th anniversary of that album being played live. And um, same deal with the uh, record labels. It has that clock to let you know what, what side we're on. So, so there we go. I won't really... Sh but a, four, a great four record set. Like I said, it came with uh, CDs, a three CD set. I'll just show you two of them. Uh, there's... These are the last two CDs in this record set. We got this manhole cover label, <laughs> which is a trip. And then this really cool made in the UK label on the other CD. And of course there's another CD with the first record set. So very nice packaging. I've yet to listen to the CDs. I've heard this album the first night I spun it in its entirety, and it took me forever to get through that. <laughs> but you know, I've been kind of doing highlights spinning, as I, as I call it, <laughs> uh, cutting through the fat and just getting to the getting to the good stuff, the juicy parts. And I love this record set. It sounds great. The band has always been a great live band, Dream Theater. I was so happy to score this. Of course, I ordered it online and had to wait forever. It seemed like it took forever for this record to get delivered to me. But once it did, it was happy times, boy. I'm telling you, this was a fun day in the record room listening to this for the first time. Blew my mind. And uh, they play Scenes from Memory album so good. It sounds so great on this record set. They did a wonderful job, not only with the packaging, but also with the live mix. It, it sounds great for a live recording, and um, I can't wait to get the Blu-ray that goes with this. That'd be great to watch in, on my flat screen. So, Dream Theater Live, such a spectacular album. Show you another live album that's spectacular. It's from Peter Gabriel, Growing Up Live. This came out recently. And um, my God, <laughs> his live recordings, this is the third one I own. He released four this year, uh, but the last three is what I was interested in. I showed the other two the, the other two in my last video. This is the last of the three. This I had this on DVD for years, and it was one of my favorite in concert DVDs because Peter Gabriel, throws a visual show it's like an art show for god's sakes with me with his, with all his music uh, being played live <laughs> he puts on such a great show i wish i had actually seen him live in person before i haven't unfortunately there's a great picture of tony levin and if you'll notice over right here in the corner Peter Gabriel singing a song upside down. <laughs> Him and his daughter sing the song called Downside Up, where the last part of the song, they sing it upside down. They're walking <laughs> on top of the lighting grid, upside down with the band playing right beneath them, right side up. So it's a visual, it's visual eye candy. <laughs> but anyway, um, like I said, this was a DVD I owned for years. It was one of my favorites. I used to show it to my friends people who weren't Peter Gabriel fans, but became Peter Gabriel fans after seeing that incredible live DVD. And um, this album is the audio from that entire DVD. And my God, it sounds so good. Some great songs on here. I mean, you got the classic Peter Gabriel songs like Red Rain and um, Sledgehammer, Mercy Street, good version of Mercy Street. But the newer songs like Darkness, Sky Blue, Downside Up, like I mentioned, Barry Williams Show. More Than This sounds spectacular on here. Um, you know, Animal Nation, it signaled a noise. And it's a great live recording. And um, I enjoy it. It's on three records. 
and the mix on here is just unbelievable uh like i said his remasters or the of his albums are the best in my collection as far as sound quality they sound great as far as live albums this is probably the best sounding as well it's an incredible mix on this live record set I actually love it um, probably because I'm a huge fan of the DVD so of course I'm gonna like this <laughs> I mean me liking this is automatic because the DVD was so good but this album set is is really really well done and well put together and I am so glad I'm throwing this in the uh, Peter Gabriel collection oh man uh, still can't get over how great the sounds the music on here is just stellar absolutely stellar and, you know I would people would say who who do I like more Phil Collins music Peter Gabriel's music I would say you know Phil Collins music is more catchy but Peter Gabriel puts up more interesting music <laughs> Is what the only and I love both. I don't get me wrong. I love both, but um, he does put up some interesting stuff, man, and it's good too. So anyway, yeah, it's hard for me to decide. I can't pick one over the other. To tell you the truth, <laughs> but good stuff. Peter Gabriel live, um, growing up live. It's a great album. This uh, I only knew. This is, I guess you could say this was a blind buy. I only knew of one song. And the rest of the album was a mystery to me because I've never owned this before, but I love this artist. And I can't believe I didn't own this until now. Um, uh, it's PJ Harvey, Rid of Me. And uh, this got reissued somewhat recently. And I managed to score me a copy of it on vinyl. And I love the song, Rid of Me. It's one of my favorite songs from her. I've never owned this on any format, so vinyl was my first listen to. I mean, I've heard the song written of me before, but as far as the whole album, vinyl was the first time I listened to these songs. It's on the Island label, really nice, sounds great on this on the turntable, and um, a well-written album. I, I really enjoyed this a lot. I've been seeing in the record store she put out an album of demos from this session, from this record. Um, now I'm curious to get that. Maybe a little later down the line I will get that, but some really good stuff on here. It sounds really hard rock. <laughs> it has like a nice hard rock feel coming out of the speakers. Um, this is a fun, chunky album to listen to. <laughs> it's just, just those heavy riffs that I mean, I wouldn't say they're hard rock metal or anything, but there's some power on this record. These songs have some power to them, and um, I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed this a lot, and um, I don't have many P.J. Harvey records. I think this is like the third or fourth one I have in my collection, but they're all great. Um, they're all different from each, from each other. Um, she kind of changes her sound from album to album, at least to me, I think she does. And uh, that's why I find her interesting. So definitely we'll be picking up more PJ Harvey records. And then, um, most likely the demo album to this record would be my next purchase. Who knows? <clears throat> but I really enjoyed that. All right, let's get back to live recordings. This is a bootleg and a pretty interesting one at that. <laughs> this is from U2. It's called The Greatest Show on Earth, live in Dublin, 1993. So uh, this is an FM broadcast put on a two record set. I yeah, two record set. Is it two? no one record set? Sorry, I thought it was a, for some reason I thought it was a two record set. No, it's only one record, and it's printed on uh, white vinyl. So this is the FM broadcast. It's it's a pretty decent recording. I wouldn't say it's great, but it's decent as far as like the sound quality. And like I said, it's on white vinyl. And here are the custom labels. Um, that's side two, actually. This is side one. And one of my favorite eras from U2. Um, I, 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 I still like their 80s music better, but this is around the time of Zoo TV and Zoo Ropa. So um, 
it was like one of the biggest concert tours I remember of the 90s is the CU2 and the Zoo TV. And it came to Oakland, which is pretty close to here. I remember MWA opened for him. I, sh I wish I had gone, but I didn't go. Anyway, this came with a poster. And the poster is just the cover art. But not too many bootlegs come with a poster, so I thought, that's pretty neat, so I'll get it. I love side one on this record. Uh, it's Zoo Station, The Fly, uh, Bono talks to the crowd, and they go into the even better than the real thing. And the last song on side one is Mysterious Ways. Uh, it's a solid, solid side one. Side two is what is really good too, but uh, side one's my favorite because it has a lot of my favorite songs from YouTube from this era of the band. This is a really cool bootleg. <laughs> like I said, it's an FM broadcast, so it sounds really good. Uh, recorded live at the Royal Dublin Showgrounds, uh, August 28th, 1993, FM broadcast. So a really uh, fun addition to the YouTube collection, which has really taken up a lot of room on the shelf. <laughs> Uh, last video, I bought the 40th anniversary to their album Boy, which was a remaster. Now I gotta see if I can squeeze this in the YouTube section, which is getting very, very tight. A lot of records <laughs> and space. Space is something that's hard to come by in this collection, so, or in this room, I should say, this vinyl room. Uh, it's getting harder and harder to store records. Lack so many. Great album, so little space. <laughs> so, wow. All right, let's move on to the next. Simple Minds, Sparkle in the Rain. Uh, this is a UK pressing, which is uh, pressed on limited edition white vinyl. This is an album I've had before, but I saw limited edition white vinyl, UK press, and I thought, wow. <laughs> I didn't know this was printed on colored vinyl, so... Just for that reason, I went for it. Even though I, it's all I already own this album, but it's just the regular American pressing on the A and M Records label, black vinyl. Which there's nothing wrong with that at all. But like I said, I didn't know this existed, and my God, <laughs> it's cool to have. White vinyl is not my favorite color of vinyl on records, but ah. Uh, it's, it's the fact that I know it, it looks like it's something that's it's rare that you don't really come by a lot, at least not around here in Northern California. I doubt I'll ever see a used pressing of this again. It's in, it's in great condition. The record plays really good, and, you know, the jacket is in great condition as well. So this was a good find, and it wasn't very expensive at all. And it was a cool find. I mean, I'm a big fan of Simple Minds, especially their early 80s albums, and this one is a killer. This is a solid record. Uh, the big hit on here was Waterfront, but it also has Up on the Catwalk, uh, East at Easter, Book of Brilliant Things. Side 2, though it doesn't have any hits, is a solid side 2. Some great songs on there. This is a good album if you're into early 80s U2 before they put out Once Upon a Time and became pop stars. <laughs> This is a great album, especially the song Waterfront, even though it's one of their biggest hits. Uh, it's one of my favorites from the band. It's just a great record, so really glad I scored the um, rare colored vinyl version of it. Okay, this was a blind buy. Um, I had no idea of any songs on this record. I just bought it on the weight of the guy's name. It's a, it's a name that I've heard a lot of. Uh, just I just never dove into the albums. And this is a record from Ellen Holdsworth. And this is a Road Games album that came out in 1983. Now, I bought this sealed, thinking it was a sealed copy from back in 1983. I was wrong. It was a sealed copy, but it's a remaster that came out last year. Uh, so it's... it's Remastered from the original analog tape, master tapes. And here is the gatefold. So I got a reissue of it. <laughs> but that's okay. Uh, I don't know anything about Alan Holdsworth. I've heard the name thrown out there many times. He's a great guitarist. 
and I always wanted to uh, dive into his music, but I didn't know where to start. And since this was the only record he had in the record store, I thought, why not start there? <laughs> and um, I'm glad I did start here, because this is an awesome album. There's, there's a label, Road Games, Ellen Holdsworth. Really good record, uh, jazz rock fusion record. So a lot of licks, <laughs> a lot of good musicianship. Um, some instrumental tracks, a couple of vocal tracks on here. Uh, the lead song, which is called, uh, uh, the title song, which is called Road Games, um, is on side one, but it's also, there's a extra bonus track on side two, at the end of side two, which is Road Games, but sung by um, Jack, uh, Jack Bruce. So there's a special version of that song sung by Jack Bruce as an extra track on the end of side two, which was really cool to listen to so this was an enjoyable album i'm definitely going to start collecting more of his records if i see him out there <clears throat> i guess this is since this got the treatment of being remastered from the original tapes i guess maybe this is i don't know if this is his best album or maybe his most uh successful album as far as sales goes uh, but I'm really glad I started here because I really enjoy this record. Um, there was some cool shit on here. <laughs> some tight musicianship on here. And, I, and he's a really impressive guitarist. Um, like I said, I've heard the name so many times, just never heard any of the music. Uh, so I'm glad I started with this album. Because um, this is such an energetic positive sounding album real exciting you could feel the energy coming off the needle it was i really enjoyed this i mean there's some great instrumental jamming on this and some really like i said some amazing guitar licks on here uh i really had a blast listening to this album um i've already spun it a couple of times in its entirety and the time just flies by it just feels like each side's only five minutes long <laughs> but there's some great songs on here. I just couldn't get over how much I love this. So glad I took the plunge and just did a blind buy, just based on the weight of the name. Brought it home and um, loved what I heard. Absolutely loved what I heard. That's a great record. So really glad I got that. All right, last album. We're gonna end with a live record. This is a promotional only copy from Bruce Hornsby in the range uh live the way it is tour 1986 through 1987 this was recorded live in new york at the ritz on february 2nd 1987 <clears throat> promotional only so this is a dj record recorded by the westwood one uh radio broadcast and they would send this album to the FM DJs and they can play this as maybe, you know, a, a live music hour during their show. Really cool. It is on RCA and it's printed off with these white promo labels that say not for sale. Very cool. Um, I have a DVD of Bruce Hornsby, not the range, Bruce Hornsby and the Noisemakers. I, I, which I've had for God since 2005 or six, and my God, that is a great DVD, <laughs> a live DVD, and it, I love it so much. I saw Bruce Hornsby twice live when he came to Sacramento, and always had a great time at his concerts. And so it's nice to get a live recording of Bruce on vinyl even though this is from the 80s and it's the range i mean there's still some great songs on here every little kiss the way it is mandolin rain uh, the red plains on the western skyline i mean this <laughs> if you're fans of that record that he the first bruce always being the range record uh some great songs from that from that cut on this album this really good stuff really good stuff and this band sounds great live a really good live recording like i said it's fm broadcast quality so it does sound good. It's, it's a pro recording. Uh, I wish they had put this out commercially. People would have bought it. <laughs> it sounds great. I just got lucky, found this used in a record shop, and in my eyes went, and immediately pulled the trigger on it and took it home with me. 
this was definitely something that was coming home with me and I'm glad I scored it because I absolutely love this live, rec live recording. Mm, so glad to have it in my Bruce collection. All right, that's it. That's the haul for December. We're done and we're done with, this will be my last video for this year and 2020. And I'd like to thank everybody who has watched my videos and has commented on my videos. Some of you even follow me on Facebook and Instagram, and we're all friends there too. I really appreciate and value the friendship with everybody I've met on the VC that extends over to uh, Facebook and Instagram. Some of you I've met in person, and that was such a thrill. I miss me meeting people on the VC again. I got to set that up again and meet more VC people when I'm digging maybe in San Francisco or Los Angeles or whatever, see if I can find some VC folks to uh, to meet with and dig with and talk music and records with. That's always a lot of fun. Uh, but what's the most fun is just chatting with you guys in the comment section about whatever you see me show and just sharing maybe when you saw the band live or whenever you bought the record way back in the day. Uh, I really love to hear that stuff because I really love talking to all of you. Uh, I love talking to people in the VC. Even if we have a difference of opinion on a song or something, it's all good to me. As long as we talk music and just keep it respectful and friendly, let's have a chat. <laughs> and let's continue the chat into next year, into 2021. It's got to get better, folks. <laughs> it's got to get, fingers crossed... It's got to get better, and um, and if well, if it still if it stays a little bit the same, at least we still got records, right? <laughs> and each other. All right, that's gonna do it. Thanks again for watching for another year of the VC, and here's to one more year. All right, take care, folks. See you in the next one.